Let's continue with the design of the impeller housing in Onshape. And before I move any further, let's rename the part in the tree. And I will just call this the impeller housing. That's good. Now I'm going to create the mounting flange on the open face. I will start by creating a sketch. Let me pick this surface to sketch on. Let me right mouse click and view normal to the sketch plane. And for the flange, I will sketch a circle and I'll let it snap right into the middle. And let's drag it out a bit. Then let's go to the dimension command and click on the circle. And I will make this a diameter of 390. And let's also use the project command because I want to grab the circle on the inside as well because that will allow me to create the faces that I need. Let's hit the check mark. I'm going to be a little more diligent about renaming things. This will be my flange sketch. And now I will choose to extrude and I will pick this face. And you'll note right now I got the outer face. I didn't get the inner face. That was defined by the additional circle that I created using the project command. So let's select that face as well. Now that I have both faces, let's define our depth as blind and 10. Everything here looks great. Let's hit the check mark and rename this. This will be my flange extrude. For the next feature, I'm going to design the mounting over on the backside. Let me turn on the display of one of my planes, the plane called front, and let's select it and create a new sketch on that plane. Once again, I always like to go to view normal to the sketch plane. And once again, I will need to use the project command in order to grab the circle, the cylinder. And now for the sketch, let's create a few different straight lines. Let's click on the line and I'm just going to eyeball it and then get it about over here and then down some depth and then get it over to there. Let's hit the escape key. And just to make sure that it locked in to it, I can go to the coincident constraint and pick the end point and grab the circle. Looks like we're good there. Just want to do a little verification. Let's dimension this thing. Let's go to the dimension icon and grab this. And this is going to be a width of 15 and for the other dimensioning let me hit the escape key to get out of dimensioning for a moment because I want to grab the other different entities to sketch from let me just hit the P key in order to make the planes visible for dimensioning and I will dimension from this line to this plane and this is going to be a distance of 180 and then let's also dimension from this line to oh had it there a second ago this plane and this one is way off i'm going to use a value of 140. there we go that is good for the flange Let's hit the check mark to complete the sketch. You'll notice I didn't do any trimming to this particular circle because you don't need to do that in on shape like you typically would in other different CAD packages. Once again, I will choose to create an extrude. Let's select the face. I just want to check to see that it says add in the merge scope is the impeller housing. That's good for the depth in the first direction. Rather than doing blind, I'm going to go up to face and we'll choose that face on the flange. Let's add a second end position. And once again, I will go up to face and I will pick this particular face. That looks good. Let's hit the check mark. And while I'm here, let's 
rename our features. This is my mount sketch. And this one, I'm going to rename that. This will be my mount extrude. And oh, wait, I forgot some stuff for the flange over here. So let's go back. I'm going to grab the bar and let's go back to the flange step here. There we go. I accidentally grabbed the divider between the parts list and the features list. And so in the flange sketch, I'm going to select this. Let's make it visible for a moment. I'm going to select this and edit it because I am going to put a hole for mounting in the sketch. Let's view normal to the sketch plane. Let's go to construction mode. I'm going to sketch a line from here and make it horizontal. And let's hit the escape key and then go and create another one and let it snap in there. I'm just creating these so I can get my point for a hole located at an angle. Let's then hit the dimension and make this to here 30 degrees. And now let's locate a point on that construction line. And then I will dimension the point. Let's dimension from here to there. And this is going to be a distance of 180. There we go. Let's now hit the check mark that now that we have updated the flange sketch. And I will create a hole. And I will locate it on that point. Let's flip the direction. And the diameter is way too big. We're going to use a diameter for this hole of 15. There we go. And through depth is fine for this one. Everything looks great. Let's hit the check mark. Let's hide the flange sketch so that we don't see its geometry. I'll use the keyboard shortcut of P to turn off the display of the planes for a moment. Now I can select the whole, actually I'm going to go to the circular pattern and let's change this from a part pattern to a feature pattern. Let's select the whole as what to pattern. For the axis, I can pick this cylindrical surface and we're going to create a total of six instances with equal spacing about here. Oops, looks like I forgot to activate the right collector. Let me remove the shell from the features to pattern. Let me click in the collector and make sure I get the cylindrical surface. There we go. I wasn't getting the preview, so I knew I clicked something wrong. Now I can hit the check mark. Now I've got my mounting hole pattern on the flange. Let me grab the rollback bar and drag it down to the bottom in order to get my features back. The next thing I will do is create a point on the surface over here for the location of the hole. Let's go to the sketch command and sketch on this surface. And let's see, I'm going to create a point here. And let me create the other point while I'm at it. I'm not sure I can just mirror the point. So I'm just going to create two points for the holes that I want. Let's hit the dimension icon and I'm going to create the dimension from here to this surface and this dimension is going to be a distance of 35 and a dimension from here to here and this one is going to be a dimension of 15. Let's do the same dimensions on the other side. Let me dimension from, how'd that point end up in space? Let's dimension from here to here, and this will be 15. And let's dimension from here. We try this flat surface. And let's do negative 35. 
There we go, that looks good. Let's hit the check mark. Now I will create a couple of holes and I will select one point and the other point. And for the depth through is good. For the merge scope, let me make sure that I'm getting the impeller housing. And the diameter is 15. It used the same value as the previous hole. And I like that one as well. Let's hit the check mark. And now I'm going to put a couple fillets on here. Let's go to the fillet command. And I will pick this edge and this edge. And for the radius, let's increase that to a value of 20. And hit the check mark. So I like everything that I have here for this mounting flange. And if I want to, to help organize things, I could select a bunch of these different entities here and then right click and add these selections to a folder. And I will call this the mount. Just another way of organizing entities in the tree. All right, next up, I want to put in some ribs in order to make this stiffer. Let me use the keyboard shortcut of P. I'm going to create a couple planes in order to sketch the ribs. Let's go to the plane called front and then I can right click on it and create an offset plane and offset in this distance. I'm going to create a plane offset a distance of 50 and that'll be good for my first rib sketch plane. Let's hit the check mark. That's, let's now pick plane one and create a new sketch. And the sketch for this one, I will, let me go over here from this side and then I can right click and view normal to the sketch. And this will be a straight line. And I'll let it go from here to about over here. Let's hit the escape key. And then I can use the coincident constraint to say, hey, let's lock this into here and lock this endpoint into here. And for the dimension for the sketch, let's dimension from here to here. There we go. Let's use a value of 25. That's good. Let's hit the check mark. And now I can click on the rib command. And for the sketch profile, let's use that sketch. For the thickness, I'm going to use a value of 10. And that looks good. We're getting a depth symmetric about there. Now I can hit the check mark. Let's now create a, another plane and another sketch and another rib. The reason I'm not mirroring it is I'm not sure that my plane called front is exactly symmetric about the middle of where I want to mirror this. So let's go to the plane called front. Let's right click on it and create an offset plane. And let's flip the direction. Use the same value of 50 and then hit the check mark. Then let's use the new plane and right click, create a new sketch. Let's view normal to the sketch plane basically do the same thing that we did before. Let's sketch in a line from there to there. Let's hit the escape key and then coincident here and here and then here and here. Put in our dimension and I'm going to dimension from here to here and use a value of 25. Let's hit the check mark. Let's create our rib. Select our sketch profile. Change the thickness. And that looks good. Hit the check mark. And I've got these 
entities. Let's take a moment just to rename this. This will be the rib one plane. Let this will be the rib one sketch. And this will be, let me deselect everything before I click on it. Well, this will be the rib two plane. And this will be the rib two sketch. And so let me see if I can select all these different entities and then just drag them into the folder. There we go. That's nice. I have it nice and organized. Now let's do a mirror of all these different entities about the middle of the part. Let's go to our mirror command. Let's change from a part mirror to a feature mirror. Now we'll select the extrude, the hole, the fillet. Let's grab this rib and this rib. And for the mirror plane, having trouble, there we go. There's the plane called right. Let's take a look. That looks awesome. Hit the check mark. Now let's hit the keyboard shortcut of P and we can collapse the mount. Let me drag this back down so we can see more of the list of features. And there we have our impeller housing. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.